Now we have a golden oldie. Black and Decker. That's an old machine there. What is it? A Black and Decker HD 1000. No year on it by the looks of it. Made in England. That's a brave age. Still running. Man still using this. Well, not at the minute. The switch isn't right either. It's a bit sticky. But she's not starting. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Must need to go on this way. Wouldn't get too many Black & Deckers on here. Older stuff probably more than the actual newer stuff. The newer stuff is just DIY and very cheap and cheerful. But the odd time you get it on you can do a wee quick fix. But generally it is just a quick fix. Because it's either going to be a cheap and fast fix or not worth fixing. Because you're not going to get many parts for these things. It's an awkward spot to have the brushes way down in there. Check them first. All flat heads. Which is a bit awkward. Turns. Brushes aren't worn out. And that brush looks okay. So I don't think that's the problem. Take a blade off as well. It's a very odd guard. It's a big massive guard as well. Not gonna break that one too handy. A black and decker, that's a hell of a guard. Blade break. So I need something to fit that. They're not even big enough. This is a tad overkill, but I have nothing else. Guard. Take that out. To access these holes. This has been worked on before because that one in here was already missing. A very small switch. I will 
not have one of them. Check the lead here. Hopefully that's the problem. Looks like it. We're neutral, not live. Just in case. I'll check the fuse. Doesn't seem like that was open before. Maybe he didn't check the fuse. Fuse is okay. Right, go with a new lead. I'm also put a new plug on it. All the grommet. Gee, because that really crushes the lead, doesn't it? You really do not want that lead coming loose. Look at that. Flathead screws are a torture. Give that a quick wee clean, make sure it's still working right. She's a wee bit sticky. But it still functions. Alright, give us a quick clean and replace this lead. I have to use the same grommet because I don't have a hope of having one like this. Working a lot better now.
tighten that all the way in because there's quite a bit of strain to actually bend that lead. Yeah, it's okay. It still closes. Quicker ways to do that, but like a nice straight line around the end of the lead, Not like a torn at all. That's the lead in the plug. Now for the blade. Right, that must be the original blade. Nice big heavy teeth on it. You'll probably not get a blade like that again for this saw. Not one that's good a quality anyway. Not with that size of tooth. These things were designed for just resharpening them. Keep going, that's with a big massive teeth on it. Bog standard blade, but big teeth. These things are just totally blunt. Yeah, that's just dull. Plus, there's one missing. So, that needs to be replaced. And go for a cheaper alternative instead. Same size, same bore, same number of teeth. 24 tooth blade. and everything tell you which way the blades turn them nothing fancy about this They're just two flat pieces of steel that front and back flange she's just sitting directly on the shoulder of the spindle 16 mil bore the big spanner again All clamping force. Stopping that blade from turning. To the guard alone will take your finger off. Now, does she run? Not a bother. She might be old, but she still works fine.
and that's her. One new lead, switch cleaned up, and a new blade. That'll keep this man cutting. Might be an old saw, but he doesn't use it very often. For all the times he does use it, it really wouldn't be worth buying a new one, so he'd rather get this one fixed up for cheap instead of buying something new. Plus, if he went out and bought an old cheap saw today, it's not going to be half the quality this thing is. So it's worthwhile keeping this yoke going. But that's her, a Black and Decker saw, up and running again. There's a new one for me now. One of the new Bosch drills. This is the Bosch 18 volt SDS drill. GBH 18 V stroke 26 F. And for a pair. But it's working. The problem is, the customer says when they were using it last, it started smoking and smelling of burning. So that's never going to be a good thing. So we're going to open this one up and see where the smoke was coming from. Hopefully don't need to go into the gearbox. It should only be the motor section on this. Got a screws. An awful lot. Another one. Right, we have to pull this gearbox out like the older version. I do have to take it out some way. Yep. That's in the way. Hmm, there's where the burning's coming from. Contact. Right. That should be okay. It's only one contact. Or one connector. And that one burnt down onto the housing itself, this plastic holder. Right. Open her up as well just to check the windings. Make sure they're not damaged. dirt on the rotor but otherwise okay stator itself actually looks fine so this here is the only problem this connector here the windings are good so the stator is actually all right if you wanted to you can replace this this is sold separately along with the actual rotor itself so that is an assembly with the plate and bearings Cost about 40 or 50 euro. This as well, stator on its own, coming on this wee plastic cover, cost about 50 euro as well. So if you burnt up the stator, you can replace it. The stator on this one's okay, so we don't need to replace this. But one of the cables is burnt, so the resistance in that cable is going to be a little bit higher. But then the resistance on this lead here, coming from the controller, is also going to be a little bit higher. So. Replacing the stator is not going to give us much advantage. The only thing we can do is reconnect this as best as we can so that it gives 
better contact and there's less resistance going through it less chance of it burning up again so keep this we'll fix this connector as a whole drill on its own actually quite nice same sort of set setup for a Bosch the controller and switch battery retainer one piece it's just nice that they kept the stator and the rotor separate on it still could fix it if you want if you got a controller or a switch problem but that there is going to cost about 120 quid just for that there part everything else inside is available good setup all the parts are available that there housing there it's not exactly the same but it's the same sort of setup as the old Bosch 4 SDS drill the old style one with the actual bearing plate on the back and the bevel gear being driven off the router which was a very good machine and a very good setup that there I've no doubt will be just as good like that setup but motor wise it's nice to see they had these here separate if they didn't wouldn't be recommending this but seeing as they do I have to say that's a good job but connectors because this is replaceable you have to have it so you can remove the parts so they put on spade connectors spade connectors are always a weak spot in any drill doing a lot of current doing a whole lot of heavy work all the currents going through this joint if it weakens at all it arcs and starts burning like this and once it starts burning burning it keeps getting worse so we have to repair this so we'll just stick the rest of it back together Actually a lot less cable available here than I thought. Soldering this isn't going to be an option because it's going to be burnt back here. If I cut away too much and have nothing left. Doesn't matter if I cut these off either because even if I replace the stator, this is still destroyed. So either way, I'm going to have to cut these off. This isn't the best option, but it's basically the only option for the space I have here. And I don't want to be put on a strip connector. No, that was in the wrong setting. It's over tightened. I do not want this thing to move. It'll still fit that weep slot there as well. Right. That should do the trick. That'll have to do. Now, this fella could have kept running it the way it was. It would have ran for a little while. But eventually that connector would have just burnt away completely. Destroying the wiring even more. So hopefully that'll give him a longer life out of this tool now. As soon as we have her opened. Just put a bit of grease on, just to help her continue hammering right. Get rid of that tool holder because the striker's still in there. The striker actually sticks up inside the tool holder. It can be very difficult to get the piston into the tool holder. And also get the striker into the piston all at the same time. It's easier to just put the striker in now. But she sticks up inside the tool holder. So to get her out, 
just push that down and she drops clean out. So there's actually a big fat o-ring up inside the tool holder just below the striker for your chisel. Whenever she's running the o-ring sits in here and holds the striker in position. Whenever she goes up she locks on. So what you're doing you're pushing the striker and just pushing that out of the o-ring. So push that in there. Make this job a bit easier. And then marry the two up. That should be her. That's her. One Bosch GPH 18 V stroke 26 F with a burnt connector. Just cleaned up and crumped back together again. We quick sample fix. Even the small stuff coming on here. A wee green DIY bar sander or delta sander. A PSM Primo. See what's wrong with this one. Nope. Seized. Might be a bearing. Maybe not. Not a bearing anyway. And you the motor doesn't look bad. The actual contacts on site aren't burnt. Yeah, there we go. There's a bearing. This one here seized. Leave it a dirty grease in there, but the actual housing is not damaged. So she's sitting attached to this. Whenever she runs, that bearing just runs around, and that just makes a wee oscillation. That's all it's doing. But this can't run around. This is stuck here. This outer one can't spin. So give us a quick wee clean, get that bearing off, see if we can get it changed. Are cleaned out. Now you get the bearing off. Can't get a set of bearing pullers onto it. Not enough of a lap here to grab. And can't use the three leg pullers either. So, simple method. Just prise it off. 
Now this year, it's only a green Bosch. It's not really a repairable tool, to be honest. Bosch sells some of the parts online. You can get wee bits and pieces. Most of the plastic parts, the main thing they don't sell is the motor itself. It'd be cheaper to buy a new tool than it would be to replace this year's motor. They do list this year counterweight and bearing separately from the motor, but they don't give you a part number for them, so they don't actually expect you to fix this. This is just a 608 bearing. It's a fairly cheap wee part to get. So compress it off handy enough and get a new one on. It would be worth doing. The main thing that's going to fail in these here is the base plate itself, and maybe these here we plastic feet that hold the base. Apart from that, unless you give it a drop and break the housing. Switch. It's only a wee simple little switch. It's not going to give that much trouble. Bearings are probably the main thing that's going to go. That and the motor. So see if we can just prise this off. Because that'll be the simplest way. Yep, yeah, look at that. Simple as that. And there's probably why it failed. And no name brand. No markings on it at all. So just a cheap wee bearing. It's only a wee cheap DIY machine. Still would last longer if you fit a better bearing Bosch. Not a 608 actually. It's a 607. So it's only a cheap fix, so we're only gonna do a cheap fix. Thought I might have to hit that with a hammer. Nope. That slack of fit she pushes on, so it's an easy repair to do at home. So that's all there is to it. Swap that out, and this should run. You can really see why you can buy these for so cheap. And you see what's on them compared to a big sander. They are very basic. Now, does it work? Now, because this bottom bearing's gone, obviously the bearings on the motor itself mightn't be great either. But they're not going to be bearings, they're probably going to be bronze bushings. That and dust never goes well, so they might be worn. That's what that sound there is. Still sounds a bit rough, but she's running. For all the price of a 607 bearing, she's worth it at that. Now what have we got? An old corded Makita nut gun. And she is old. This is a 6906 three quarter drive nut gun. From 1998. That's an old one. 25 years of work done. Now I'm assuming problems the anvil. Yep, motor's running. She's running otherwise, forward and reverse. Just smashed the anvil on it. So, new anvil. But for a machine from 1998, will we have the part? That's the question. I'm going to get it opened up here anyway. 
and see if we have one to match it. Bolt missing as well. That'll not be a problem. Now, can I get this head off without taking the motor out? Nice one. Now, put that to one side. We want to get on here now to get this anvil out. Now, this isn't one you'll be getting too often. That's the anvil. Nice big lump of a thing. And for all it is, it's not cheap. Well, mind you, I'm not sure the price of this one. It's an older one. But I know some of the modern ones can be very expensive. So this isn't a detent or a spring. This is the bolt through. One that has a pan going through and a rubber on the actual socket. Let's see if we have one of these. And to get to this, we'll have to climb. Three quarter, half inch, half inch. That's one, half inch, plenty of half inch. Actually, all the half inch. Only one three quarter. Mm, don't recognize that number. So, this is the part number, and then a 946 9. And this is the part we need, number six. Which has actually got two different numbers. 586-6 and 231-0. Neither are this number. Problem is Makita change their numbers sometimes. Maybe they take out a new machine using the same anvil and they just use the new machine anvil number. Or there could be a problem with the original anvil, maybe it needs better lubrication or something, or maybe an extra pinhole, a different design. They'll redesign it and take out a new number. So, to find out if this is the right one for our machine, we have to somehow find out old part numbers. But luckily, on this particular computer, I have another computer. This is an old computer, probably from about 20 odd years ago. I can start the old computer and this computer. And this has got the old Makita software, which you don't actually get anymore. They don't send you out the software, which is a shame. So, what was she? 6906. That's the anvil. And that's the same number, 231-0. Aha! Now we're getting somewhere. She was changed. So that is the new number, and that is the old number. Which is still different from this one. So as you can see on this, they actually changed the size of the borehole. From 7.5 to a 5.2. They change the radius in the pan. So it tells you everything that they've done. So they were the current part numbers and these are the new numbers now. 
these have changed over so these are the ones for Taiwan and these are the ones for all other countries except Taiwan let me see just here that is my number just double check that so you can actually search the part itself it doesn't matter if it's old or new it will actually come up so one three four nine four six dash nine and there we go a six nine oh six Nikita nut gun there's the part number mine is simply doesn't come up and you'll be going to the breakdown on its own so that's it there so it's actually just blocked off that number that's the number there 501 item number if I go on to it and click it comes up the number then and if I click on the anvil itself it comes up a different number those were the old Makita software comes on very handy if you have old Makita parts. So that's the right part and I can fit that on this machine. So that there for me is a true indication of Makita quality. That shows you how long that's been sitting here. It's already built up a wee layer of rust. So Makita, whenever they take it apart, if there's anything wrong with it, they can do any improvements they do they modify the part take out a new number to get a new part always improving the old ones so this one here there's a different size of hole a different size radius in that chamfer for holding the pin for locking the socket on it's not great at having rust but it's either fix it now and be done or with weeks on the new part yeah it's only superficial anyway Good as new. Plenty of grease just along that channel. Just for the, to keep it lubricated in the long run. And it's nice these here anvils as well on the Makitas. See the hole here? That's actually connected to the center bore. So what that means is whenever this is running, what she's doing, this big hammer here, this weighted hammer, she spins around and she jams up on the anvil. And what happens then there's a big massive spring inside of here. There's a big gear system. So it's actually torqued around. This will overcome the actual anvil and this will press down the spring and she'll ride up over the top and whenever she gets to the other side this weight will spring back up this hammer and because this is what it is she's a big lump of steel hammer and she will swing around and slap that hard and that's your actual impact that's what's torquing off your nuts and again this will drop down right over the top of the anvil spring back up again and then slap on and every time she goes up and down, any bit of grease that's on up here or works its way in will get into the centre here and will actually push up. So it will eventually build and will be pushed out through this little hole on the side here, which is actually inside your steel bush in here. So this one won't actually bind up like some of the other modern cordless machines. You'll hear them starting to growl. And wear out the steel bush in the middle that's because of no hole on the anvil so they put it together put a bit of grease on whatever grease is there whenever that wears away that's it these makita ones and some other ones this makita one especially and some of the modern makitas cordless ones have a hole up the center so any grease that gets in pushes out and self lubricates the steel bush it's a much much better system Inside as we chamfer and faces down on the bottom of this. See some of these rollers have fallen off. Little roll pins. They're steel pins for centering and holding this gear. 
and the housing. So they slide in there. Now you can clean this out if you want. Just have to wash the whole thing out. I'm not going to clean out the insides, but I'll just clean up the edge of it and the back end of it whenever I'm finished. No really need to clean out the inside. The grease doesn't really do very much. It doesn't actually take a lot of grease in this thing. If you over grease it, it's just going to work its way back through the gears and out into the motor itself. There's only a little bit of grease needed on it. There's no point in over greasing it. So these need to be located onto here. So somewhat line them up. Flip it over. And then adjust them. More precisely. Slide up your housing. Then use the pins to center everything. Push that down. That's it. Add a clean. Just give that a quick clean. Wash this out a wee bit on the parts washer, just a light wash. I don't want to get any of the liquid onto the bore, so it's just basically a wet brush I'm using. Now that's it all nice and pretty looking. Look at that. I'm not cleaning that just to make it look good. I'm going to put a wee bit of grease on this needle bearing too. Just to make sure she keeps running smooth. And a little bit under the gears down here. Like I say, if you over grease this thing here, or any nut gun, there's no oil seal here. There's no way to keep the grease on. If you put in too much, it's going to come out. If it does come out and the surface is already covered in grease, it's going to start seeping out and weeping, getting onto the motor. But if it does come out and it's already dry, it's just going to coat around here and that's it. So that's the reason I just give it a quick wee clean. That's her. Give it a wee wiggle as you're putting it on to get that gear on. Some of that grease will come out. I'm going to the screws at times, so make sure they're clean. While we're at it, as well, just check the brushes. Still plenty of meat on them. See the heads we have broken. That's because of the trigger. You can quickly change from forward and reverse. But it's still going forward, or vice versa, reverse, and you click in the opposite direction she actually stops very sharply and goes the other direction as so we see this chip in here 
So she'll actually make a big massive arc and a flash whenever you change the direction suddenly with the motor still spinning. That's what that flash is doing. She's actually eating away the brush. But still, they are damaged. Yeah, for the price of them. What are they, five or six euro? I'll just replace them. Brushes aren't the most expensive thing. So I'll put it in a new set. Make sure she's running right. This is actually the expensive bit. So I might as well leave it running right with a cheap set of brushes. As you can see, plenty of meat left on them. So I could just file them down, but for all the price for a set of brushes, just use a new set. And as well, even the brush caps in these older machines, see the slot on them. They're actually double sided. So if you strip out one side, you can just flip it around and use the other one. Something you don't see now on modern machines. They're always just one side. They only ever have the slot on one side. That's all broken as well. The armature is not actually flashing, that is just from suddenly changing direction. And you know it's definitely not the armature. If the armature was bad, it would have less power and it wouldn't have the power to actually break the bloody thing. So that's her. That leaves it running right. 25 year old Makita, three quarter inch nut gun. The 6906. That's her. Nice one. That'll keep that man running for a while longer. And take off a few more bolts but anyway that's her thanks for watching folks and a big shout out and a thank you to all you as well that's actually supporting the channel i see the numbers of subscribers have actually gone up to ninety-seven thousand there over the moon folks really can't thank you enough for actually supporting the channel thanks very much and a big shout out as well to all my members as well on here on youtube and on patreon that actually helps fund and support the channel thank you all so much now, I know I'm not getting a wild lot of stuff up in Patreon, so I must get more posted there shortly. But anyway, thanks very much, folks, for all your support, your memberships, and for subscribing to the channel. It means the world to me. Thanks so much. Anyway, that's that one. Thanks for watching.